Okay, welcome back. So we're going to be talking about inner planking. It's always a good day when you start out in your inner planking. That means your framing's done, your keel is done, forefoot, whatever else you had to do the boat, and now you're starting on on bottom planking, and that's always a good feeling. Uh, we milled down all the bottom planking to 3 16 uh, We took some 5 quarter and uh, got three pieces out of that by resawing, and then used the planer and planed that down to 3 16 So we've got a bunch of planks over there that are 16 feet long. And, it, you know, widths are anywhere from 5 inches to 7 inches. I've seen them a little bit wider in some of the older boats but not necessary. We want them to bend really nice up in here. So we're gonna keep them up in here. We're probably maybe four inches, you know, up in here. So when you're taking the boat apart, really good idea to keep this one. If you're not gonna keep any other of the in, in underboards, you know, the inner board, the planking, at least keep this one. And the reason being is that we wanna know this angle. It's not a 45. It's a 45 back there working this way but once you come up into here, it changes. The degree changes up into a 45. And that way we can meet our other planks nice without having either a shorty or one that looks like, you know, a triangle. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna start at this end, just like we've done here. We used our old one for the first pattern piece. Now we're climbing up this hill here and we're gonna get up into here and we're gonna stop. We're gonna start from the back, we're gonna get up into here and we're gonna stop. If we were gonna do this whole boat and this boat was say a 22 footer, U22 or something, you'd wanna start at the front and start at the back and come into the middle. And about four feet or so, you wanna stop and go, okay, all my planks are right around five to seven inches. I've got 38 inches to go. And now I need to measure out and figure out what my widths are going to be. Because what you don't want to happen is you want to come up into here, come up into here and end up with like a two incher. You want to not do that. So uh, that's too thin and it's not right. So Chris Craft did it the same way. Almost all the boats that I've taken apart, you'll find that in the middle section, they've got random widths and the reason for that is they did they that's how they made up that center section they figured it out and said okay now everyone needs to be about four inches instead of five or seven so just keep that in mind when you're when you're laying this stuff out and putting the inner bottom on to start from both directions and work into the middle very important so we've got this front section started we got the back started what we do is we work from one side to the other too. So we put this one on, then we put that one on, then we put this one and then this one and then this one and then this one. And we could, because we want to keep our ends at the same point, you know, these two are the same, these two are the same, these two are the same all the way through the boats. So you don't have some weird transition from one side to the other. You can keep them all the same width. So now what we can do is we'll go over and we'll put a plank on the other side. So I'm just getting this glue cleaned up right here. So my boards will come together really nice. Uh, I filled all these holes here. I put the glue and then bamboo skewers in all these holes because of this is the old frame and it had the old holes in it. And so you just take a piece of sand block, sandy paper, and you just clean that up. Just look at all your landings again. Make sure those are all nice and flush. And then get all that dust off of there. 
And you're ready for the next plank. So it's nice that these planks are a little bit short. We're running off of 16 footers that we've had milled up to 3 16 Basically what we did is we took a piece of five quarter stock and took it and re it and got three pieces out of a five quarter. They were about five sixteenths inch thick. And then we went and we uh, planed these down with a planer down to 3 sixteenths to our final thickness. This actually was this other piece right here. And so it's nice because now what you can do is you can just flip that around and now use this same edge to start your next piece. What you want to look for though is to make sure that you're nice and tight up here. I like to be nice and tight and that looks really good. I got a gap right here and, it, and that should be it. So. I'll mark where I want to cut this and I'll cut this end off and then we'll go from there. So we're just using the jigsaw and we can cut right on the line because we added a little bit and so we're going to still be safe. It's going to take a couple times to cut this to get it to fit really nice because one of the reasons it's on a slope and so if you just cut it without trying to fit it each time then you're going to end up short especially on the front where there's a nice curve to it and there's a big curve you know. They end up becoming shorter if you cut it right to the length. By the time you push it all down, it, you know, you'll have a gap in there. So we'll sneak up on it and uh, with our next cuts. All right, we got that rough cut and we'll go fit it to the boat. All right, that was a good cut. It fits really nice. Need to clean up a little bit on this edge right here. Good to have a really nice, sharp, low profile uh, hand plane to do this. So you don't chip out any edges and it works really nice. So. Okay, one thing that I see in here, because it's at a curve, I've got a gap up here and a gap right here. So I'm going to take care of that. What I do is I, where the gap closes, I just make a little mark right here, where it opens up again right here, and then just take a nice swipe in between those. I'm going to take one right in the middle, out to the edge, and then from my mark to my mark. Okay, one more time. Here. You just want to try to get that gap closed up and as tight as possible. That did it. That looks really good. Nice and tight all the way along the seam. Now I'm going to make some marks here uh, where the plank edge ends because I want to know where to put the 5200. Um, I don't want to butter up all these with 5200 and then have to work over it and get it all over my clothes. And everything. Squeeze out a decent amount. We're putting these down with these bronze boat nails. They're ring shanked bronze nails. A couple reasons we use these. One, they're extremely strong. Also, when we go to put the bottom planking down, if we hit this nail with the drill, it's gonna either go through it because it's soft or go right to the side of it. And, it. and if it was a screw and we put a screw on here, uh, and you hit that with the drill bit, it would just break the drill bit or else you wouldn't be able to put a screw where you want to screw. So uh, ring shank boat nails are sufficient. They actually use steel nails uh, when they built this boat. So they obviously weren't too concerned about uh, using nails. So we just took it one step further. 
we got our plank fit. we got a 5200 down. We're just going to nail this thing down. I just thought of something. What's a good thing to do is give yourself a little registration mark. Like, I want to know where the middle of this frame is. So I'm just going to put a mark right there. I know where that one is. We're good back here. But if you had a bunch of them that you were going over, you want to make sure you put a little mark there so you know where to put your nail. Get it up there, get it nice and tight. I'm going to pre-drill these. I don't want to crack this when I put a nail in it, so I'm going to pre-drill it. You don't have to use a lot of nails. I mean, this will be held down really good. And the more nails you put in it, the more apt you are to hit it with a screw that you need to place there. So when you're putting the planks on. And there you go. Inner bottom plank down, nice and tight on the sides. All fits 200 down. Nailed down, that's not going anywhere. It's gonna last for a real long time. So we finished up putting that inner bottom on. Uh, we're gonna finish all that up. Uh, I did wanna to talk to you about this transom area. In the last video, I showed you that it, it was pretty rotten and pretty bad. Uh, so we replaced all that just basically like the factory did. We did everything just like the factory and so you know, we're going to have to plane down and we're going to have to shape all this stuff to get it nice arc and nice smooth back here. Uh, and then that'll be ready for some transom planking. All right, that wraps up the inner bottom. Uh, really appreciate you guys tuning in and watching. Hopefully that was helpful to you. Uh, we're going to be putting on the new bottom planks here. We've got all that stuff already milled up. We're going to finish out our inner bottom and get on to putting the outer bottom on and we'll share you that with you in the next video. Also, we got a video coming up on tools that we use here in the shop. We've got a couple people that have commented and requested that. So we're gonna, oh, we'll clean up the shop a little bit and then we'll film some stuff on that for you guys. So uh, stay tuned for that. That should be coming out pretty soon. But uh, thanks a lot for subscribing. Thanks for watching. Uh, hit that like button and we'll see you back here. Bye.